This is the M4 Max Mac Studio. This is the M4 Max MacBook Pro. These two Macs with very different form factors have the exact same specs. 14 core CPU, 32 core GPUs, 16 gigs of RAM. They have the same 410 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth. Side note, that's almost four times the total data per second that the RAM can move around than the base model M4 Mac. And that's true whether that's the Mac Mini, the MacBook Pro, or the MacBook Air. An often overlooked beef spec of these M4 Max monoliths. Beef spec. The question is, do these two computers have the same level of performance, or do you have to give some up for portability? If you do, is it a meaningful amount of power you're giving up for portability? I think that's the better question. This thing is like six pounds. There's gotta be some reason for all that extra weight. Spoiler alert, it's the heatsink. I'm gonna start with the hardware itself. To get these from Apple with the same specs, the MacBook Pro model of the M4 Max starts with the one terabyte SSD. So to match with the Mac Studio, that's the one thing you'll have to bump up when you buy it, if we're going blow for blow on specs. That means this M4 Max comes in at a whopping $3,200. And for that, you get three Thunderbolt 5 ports, there's full-size HDMI, an SDXC card reader, and a headphone jack. The Studio, and again, same computing power, same M4 Max, begins its journey at $2,200, a full $1,000 less. And you get a little bit more. An extra Thunderbolt 5 port, making it four on the back, two USB-A ports for a keyboard and mouse or your vintage peripherals, you get a 10 gigabit ethernet jack, and two additional 10 gigabit USB-C ports on the front. But obviously, no screen, no keyboard, no mouse. So you can't actually use this computer right out of the box. And sure, you could get the world's cheapest 1080p screen from Amazon for a little over a hundred bucks, link in description, and then like an Amazon Basics keyboard and mouse. But that kind of makes no sense. If you're buying the pinnacle of a Mac computer, you might as well pair it with the current pinnacle of a Mac monitor too. I can already see the comments about this monitor being just 60 hertz. I love this screen. The point is, it seems like this computer is much cheaper for the same thing, but you can't actually use it until you buy more stuff. The range of the price of that stuff is so wide, I can't fairly compare them. Not only that, but I also use a keyboard and a mouse and the Apple Studio display when I'm using my MacBook Pro. So now this is like a $5,000 purchase. Lordy. As you may have guessed, especially if you've been following my channel for the last few months, since these do have the same chips in them, any difference in performance is basically gonna come down to heat. Okay, performance. First off, there is no noticeable difference in any capacity for normal everyday computer stuff. They'll start up just as quickly, programs load at the same speed, office apps use like 5% of their potential power. So in a blind test, these two computers are totally equal for email, meetings, web browsing. And actually, even if you get into medium harder stuff, things like video editing doesn't heat up the MacBook Pro. So it certainly doesn't heat up the Mac Studio. I tested this out with an export of a 13 minute video. It's shot with two cameras in 4K. It's not super super heavy on effects, but there's some. Some body double sped up stuff. There's a color grade. Some backgrounds melting away with animated titles stuff. Anyway, when exporting this project to H.265, these two computers finish within like a few seconds of each other. No difference at all, and neither of them heat up at all during the export. It's strange, but because of Apple's media engine, CPUs and GPUs just aren't really hit hard during video exports. So video editors, you're covered. You're not gaining anything if you go with the studio, performance-wise. Moving on to a Blender test, and not a Blender render benchmark. I downloaded this demo file of some kind of underwater situation. I'm on the MacBook Pro here, and even on a 5K display, moving around this scene is totally smooth. It's not even using all of the the GPU. The GPU is at like 75%. And I don't really know how to use Blender. I'm not an animator, but I was messing around and importantly rendering out this scene on both the Studio and the MacBook Pro. And same story. They finished the render within a couple of seconds of each other. And during this export, the fans on the MacBook Pro really get going. So while this can handle the amount of heat of a 3D render without having to slow anything down, these fans do actually get loud. It's just with my normal workload, they barely ever have to turn on at all. On to video games. There's a few big names out for Mac now. I just saw Cyberpunk 2077 is out on Mac. That's cool. But we're gonna use the new Assassin's Creed Shadows game for this comparison. On 1080p, both computers seem to be able to hit between 50 and 60 frames per second with all the settings on high. This game has full ray tracing, so that's pretty demanding. I mean, it's definitely not not water-cooled RTX 3080 performance, but whatever, I'm happy big games are coming to the Mac. I'll do some ninja sneaking on some airplanes on my way to a traveling gig. And just to be thorough, and not at all to justify this completely ridiculous purchase that I made that's been in the background of this shot all along so far, I decided to push these things a little bit to make sure they hold up. This is for science. I need this absurdly wide monitor. It's not a frivolous purchase, Andy. At 
whatever resolution you call this, 5,000 something by 1440p, with the settings on medium, because everything falls apart on high with this, this much screen real estate. But personally, I think higher res, lower settings looks nicer than lower resolution, even on max settings. Anyway, we're not testing to see how good of a gaming computer the M4 Max is. We're testing to see if the M4 Max MacBook Pro is as fast as the M4 Max Mac Studio at doing things. And yep, again, these fans start going bonkers after a few minutes on the MacBook Pro. but both the Studio and the Pro hover around 30 frames per second using this screen on the benchmark setting from Assassin's Creed Shadows. Even AAA games will not overheat the MacBook Pro. The fans will get loud though. And to that last point, I think it is important to note that the M4 Max Mac Studio is basically silent always. I mean, 10 minute long Cinebench test, doesn't matter. Silent. It's got a big fan and a big heat sink inside, which means it can spin the fan a lot slower, almost seven times slower, which means it can operate way more quietly than the 7,000 RPM fans in the MacBook Pro to achieve the same results. Speaking of Cinebench, I was speaking of Cinebench. Something that I know will overheat the MacBook Pro is Cinebench, but with an interesting caveat. If you just run Cinebench on both computers, the Mac Studio, looking through MX Power Gadget, you can see its processor speed is locked in at 3.9 gigahertz. MacBook Pro takes so long to spin up its fans that it actually starts to thermal throttle before they get up to speed, which is nuts because the fans in here do have enough power to keep it from thermal throttling, but they literally take almost two full minutes to get up to full speed. So during that time, the processor will have already slowed down due to heat. The temperature comes back down, the processor speed goes back up. And to prove that, all it takes is one little free piece of software called Max Fan Control, where you can just tell these fans to run full blast. And if you pre-spin up the fans, on one hand, yep, it's loud. But on the other hand, the MacBook Pro matches the Mac Studios Cinebench score. Look, I'm running it back. Before I started the test, I set the MacBook Pro's fans to go buck wild. Then here comes a five minute long repetitive Cinebench test. And you can see right on this power graph, the light blue line is core frequency the speed of the CPU. That's the line that dips when the CPUs are thermal throttling. And this is a perfectly straight line on both computers. The tiny little blips is when the test restarts because it has to reload the thing. It gets hot, the MacBook Pro gets right up against that heat threshold where it will start thermal throttling, but it never quite gets to it. It finishes with a score equal to or within like 2% of the Mac Studio score every single time I do it. So any speed difference in these two computers is literally just MacBook Pro fan lag. This thing I have right here is gonna feel slightly out of place in a video about M4 Maxes, but I'm banking on some percentage of you not actually having a Max, but rather rocking the M4 Mini. And with this video's sponsor, you can deck that Mini out like it's a Mini Mac Pro. It's a hub disguised as a Mini Mac Pro. It's got an NVMe drive built right into it on the bottom, so extra storage is taken care of, plus an SD card reader, plus a micro SD card reader, and two USB-A 3.2 ports on the back for your keyboard and whatever else. It's even got these little rubber feet on the bottom to further reduce the operating noise of the Mac Mini's already almost silent operation. It's adorable. I have a code in the description that you can get 15% off of this or anything on Orico's website. While you're at it, subscribe to my channel because evidently you work for me now. I'm sorry. I have for some reason gotten tons of comments from people asking me to look into pro audio with the new Mac computers. People asking me if the M4 Mac Studio is enough or if they need to go with the Ultra. I don't do any pro audio, but I downloaded Logic Pro and I got my hands on a demo song. The actual cut from Beck Colors album with over 130 tracks and instruments. Tons of plugins, this is a professionally edited thing. And while the efficiency cores light up a bit, the performance cores are cruising along at like 10% utilization and it only uses a couple of gigs of RAM. The MacBook Air would be overkill for this. Remember, all Mac computers now have the same actual CPU cores. The M4 cores are the same. There's just more of them in these computers and the memory bandwidth thing. I'm starting to wonder if I just completely misunderstood what they mean by music production, or maybe like video editing, where back in the Intel days, this might have been something you needed a pro computer for. Those days are over. Exporting a song on Logic Pro hits these two things the same. Neither of them heat up at all. Next, I ran a geek bench. On single core, MacBook Pro beat the Mac Studio, barely. Scores were essentially the same. GPU test, Mac Studio beat the Mac Pro. 
barely by 2% again within the margin of error. In another real world test, and I think the best stress test of them all for a Mac computer, because this cranks the CPUs and GPUs both to 100%, and that's a Lightroom raw photo to JPEG export. And honestly, if these come out the same also, I don't know what else to throw at this thing that would be any harder, since this will use all the CPUs and the GPUs together. So here comes a big export on both computers of 689 photos. These are 48 megapixel raw images from a Sony a7 IV being converted to JPEG. Check this out. And it's the same story. The MacBook Pro starts heating up, the fans get loud, and I've obviously sped up the time on this graph, but these two computers finish this task at the same moment. And that was without pre-spinning up the fans. I think that just didn't take long enough for it to get hot enough, but I've already established that once the fans do go crazy fast, the thing stops throttling. So if you're exporting, I don't know, 5,000 photos for some reason, there's not gonna be a meaningful difference in the speed of these two computers just the noise of these two computers. The MacBook Pro has the added value of extreme portability when compared to the Mac Studio, obviously. But the Studio has the added value of nearly silent operation, no matter what you make it do. I think if you're someone who's choosing between these computers, it'll come down to whether you ever like to be able to work in a place that's not your desk. Or if a loud fan during heavy exports or video games bothers you, well, it's the Studio for you. But you just can't say you're getting a Studio because it'll go harder. You just can't, that would be incorrect. Goodbye. Mm. This is from Wawa. Hello, Jonah.